He lost two family members in the same house fire. But a Texas father says it didn't have to happen if the state just required one safety feature. It was very difficult not to just try to force my way in. And that's where we start on this Friday night. Thanks for being with us. I'm Doug Dunbar. And I'm Kaylee O'Kelly. Most Texas homes don't have fire sprinklers, even though they are proven to save lives. When CBS 11 I team investigated, uh, the investigators went digging for answers. We found powerful group right now searching to keep the safety feature out of your home. Brian New on this for us tonight. Brian? Yeah, Doug, the Texas State Fire Marshal says every home in Texas should have a fire sprinkler system. But Texas lawmakers have refused to make it a requirement in new homes and have even gone as far as to block cities who have tried. When seconds matter, minutes can be too long. Could a firefighter get there this quick? No, no, we can't get there that fast. The best fire departments in North Texas can reach the scene of a fire in less than 10 minutes of a 911 call. That's fast, but there are times when even that is not fast enough. It was just surreal. It's the sort of thing you, you just, you know, it's unbelievable. Two years ago, firefighters made it to this Colleyville home in less than eight minutes. But in those short minutes, the fire had consumed much of the house. Four people were inside. Two had made it out when firefighters arrived. 79-year-old John Andrews, who had mobility issues, did not. Neither did his grandson, Bobby O'Neill Jr. Bobby was 32 years old, but because of a prior brain injury from a car accident, his family says he had the mental capacity of a child. I received a phone call from my daughter um, telling me that their grandparents' house was on fire. Bobby O'Neill Sr. drove up from Waco as fast as he could, and when he arrived at the scene... I'd asked one of the, the firemen. He pleaded if they could let me. He begged firefighters to let him go inside. Go up on the ladder upstairs where I knew my son would be. <laughs> uh, of course, they said it was too dangerous to let me do that. Bobby O'Neill Jr. and John Andrews never did make it out. Every year in Texas, on average, 150 people die in fires, but not one of those died in a fire where there were one of these. The statistics tell the story. No one is dying in sprinkler occupancies nowhere in Texas. The state fire marshal says if that fact doesn't convince you that fire sprinklers should be in every home, then perhaps this will. What we've done today here is we've we set up two identical cubes. The Plano Fire Department set up a demonstration for the I-Team. Same setup, same room. The one difference between these two rooms is the one on the right has a fire sprinkler. A fire is then set in a wastebasket in each room. 22 seconds later, the smoke alarms go off in both rooms. At a minute, four seconds, the sprinkler in the room on the right goes off. Two minutes in, the fire in the room with the sprinkler is out. If someone was in this house, would they have survived this fire? Very survivable. Now check out the room on the left. At two minutes and three seconds, the entire room catches fire. Firefighters call this the flashpoint. At two minutes, 25 seconds. Okay, go. The Plano Fire Marshal calls in the firefighters. In real life, David Kerr says it would likely be another six minutes before firefighters arrived at the scene. If you're in the room, you had no chance of escaping. The truth of the matter is, these are life safety devices, both for the public and for our firefighters. In 2008, the International Code Council decided every new American home should have fire sprinklers. For 20 years, Texas adopted most of the council's minimum recommendations, but not this one. In fact, attached to this bill about licensing plumbers, in 2009, Texas lawmakers quietly put in a measure that banned Texas cities from requiring sprinklers in new homes. But why? One of the main reasons why people are moving here are not for our mountains and our beaches, it's because we have affordable housing. Phil Crone is the president of the Dallas Builders Association. 
Fire sprinkler advocates point the finger at lobbyists like him for the reason sprinklers are not in every new home in Texas. But home builders say what they're fighting for is the freedom for home buyers to choose. Adding fire sprinklers to a new home costs roughly $2 per square foot. For a new 3,000 square foot home, that increases the price by $6,000. $6,000 can make a tremendous amount of difference. According to the Real Estate Center at Texas A&M, for every $1,000 you raise the price of a new home, 20,000 Texas families aren't able to afford that new home. Shortly before the fire, Bobby O'Neill Sr. bought a gift for his son. I just couldn't seem to want to sell her or do anything with her. With his son's brain injury, O'Neill says riding horses was therapeutic for him. These days, O'Neill spends a lot of time out here, alone, thinking about his son. O'Neill says before the fire, he never thought about fire sprinklers. He now wishes he had. I feel like that if it was mandatory, it, it would save a lot of lives. Now, a handful of Texas cities have been able to get around the state law, but only because they had fire sprinkler requirements on the books before 2009. In Addison and Highland Park, these two cities they both require sprinklers in all new homes. A couple of other cities that we'll take a look at, such as South Lake and Frisco, they too require fire sprinklers in new homes, but only if those homes are larger than 6,000 square feet. Doug Cayley, some of these cities have tried to expand those requirements, but simply can't because of this state law. It's, it's eye-opening, and you know, you think if there's anything you can do to save a life, yes, it comes at a cost, but why wouldn't? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Brian, thank you. Appreciate your time on that.